Norway is a land defined by its fjords, deep, glacier-carved inlets running along the country's famous rugged coastline. These majestic natural wonders provide breathtaking scenery but also pose immense infrastructure challenges. How do you build connections across vast expanses of deep, frigid, stormy waters? This is the transportation puzzle Norway has grappled with for centuries. Fjords have traditionally been crossed via ferry, but these services are slow, unreliable, costly, and vulnerable to the area's famously nasty maritime weather. Is there a smarter, more resilient solution? Could an innovative new architecture provide fast, efficient, regular links across Norway's fractured fjordland geography? Enter the floating tunnel, a completely submerged, tethered tube hovering safely below the fjord's surface, out of range of wind and waves. This groundbreaking structure promises to revolutionize travel in Norway and could totally transform connectivity for isolated coastal communities across the globe. But how would it work? Can we really build a huge, floating concrete tunnel deep underwater? What clever design innovations allow it to rise and fall with the swell, yet stay firmly in place? And what radical new tunnel travel experience awaits adventurous travelers? In Norway's stunning western fjord lands, between the major cities of Stavanger and Bergen, construction will soon begin on the planet's very first full-scale floating tunnel. Slated for completion in 2030, this engineering marvel will form the centerpiece of the landmark Rogfast Link project, a 30-kilometer crossing comprising over 27 kilometers of subsea road tunnel punctuated by a 1.7-kilometer floating bridge tunnel arching across the deep Bjorna Fjord. Spanning this gorgeous fjord, the floating tunnel tube will be tethered to the rocky seafloor nearly 300 feet below. But how will this work in practice? And can it really withstand the extreme conditions found on Norway's tempestuous west coast? Gracefully hovering below the waves, the finished tunnel will be an eerie sight, like a phantom structure from a Nordic myth. The white tube will exist in a twilight zone, dimly visible from passing boats, yet isolated from the water's surface. Periodic emergency stations connecting it with access shafts punched through the seabed will provide faint glowing portals along its ethereal length. The tunnel will feature two lanes of traffic in each direction as well as emergency stopping bays and state-of-the-art ventilation, drainage, and safety systems. And whilst externally this subaquatic conduit will appear silently suspended within the fjord's peaceful depths, Inside will tell a different story. What's it like to drive through a floating tunnel? Rather than boring through solid bedrock, the tunnel is essentially a loose tube subjected to a dynamic marine environment. So while vehicles cruise through outside an eternal ballad of creaking, knocking, and shuddering sings as tides and waves wash back and forth, it's enough to quicken the pulse of even the steeliest driver. Clearly travel within such a flexible structure brings unique ride characteristics. But critically, the engineered flexibility of the floating tunnel also provides enhanced stability and resilience. The tunnel is designed to passively move with the water's complex flow patterns rather than rigidly resist them. A series of heavy vertical tethers fix the tube to over 300 gross tons of high-density ballast bricks piled on the fjord floor below. This enables up to 16 feet of vertical movement whilst keeping the tunnel locked tightly in position horizontally against currents and waves. Meanwhile, a network of cables and anchors running perpendicular to the structure provides additional stability. The result is a securely tethered yet compliant tunnel passively reacting to a dynamic subsea environment. This built-in flexibility is key to its survival in Norway's notoriously rough and freezing waters. But just how rough do conditions get out there? and have engineers properly stress-tested their radical floating tunnel design before entrusting motorists' lives to such a first-of-its-kind structure. With peak winds over 90 miles per hour and waves up to 65 feet, the North Sea is capable of extreme brutality, and Norway's western coast consistently faces the full wrath of this volatile body of water. Engineers on the ROGFAST Link project have gone to great lengths analyzing historical weather data for the area. They've then run advanced 3D simulations recreating the very worst combinations of wind, waves, currents, and tide to assault their tunnel designs with. Detailed digital modeling has also been backed up by one ratio 80 scale physical models tested in hydraulic laboratories. The engineers working on Norway's floating tunnel have gone above and beyond when it comes to testing and ensuring structural integrity. They understood that the North Sea and Norway's fjords can generate extreme winds, waves, and storms. So in addition to advanced 3D computer simulations modeling these harsh conditions, they also built incredibly detailed scale models of the tunnel structure. 
these miniaturized tunnels were 50 feet long, large enough to provide meaningful data. Engineers then placed these scale models in specialized hydraulic testing labs featuring ponds and wave generators. Here, they could accurately mimic the same hurricane force winds, massive waves, and freezing sub-zero temperatures that the real floating tunnel might face. They essentially simulated the worst artificial storms imaginable to attack their designs. By relentlessly blasting these scale models with these simulated gales and monstrous waves again and again, they were able to prove the structural resilience of their floating tunnel configuration against virtually anything the North Sea could throw at them. Now in its actual location in the fjord, the full-size tunnel will rest around 100 feet below the surface, firmly anchored to the seabed. This puts it safely out of reach of even the biggest storm-generated waves on the surface. However, the tunnel won't rely solely on its depth. It also features an advanced ballast system with pressure sensors that enables it to dynamically adjust buoyancy as needed. If exceptional conditions are detected, the ballast bricks can be temporarily hydraulically lifted, providing extra buoyancy to lift the tunnel fractionally away from the madness above. Whilst storm resilience is clearly essential, ensuring the highest possible safety standards for travelers remains the number one priority. All floating tunnel lanes will be surveilled with state-of-the-art cameras, sensors, and fire detection technology, monitored 24-7 from a dedicated control room. The entire structure can also be immediately closed via waterproof safety doors should an incident occur. And unlike traditional tunnels bored through solid rock, here, regular emergency escape shafts mean no one ever need to be more than 500 feet from an exit route to the surface. What's more, specialist rescue vessels will remain on constant standby, ready to evacuate the tunnel if needed via dedicated evac points. Of course, all vehicle occupants must pray such emergency measures will never be required. Yet despite the evident challenges of burrowing a habitable tunnel deep beneath a freezing fjord, engineers remain adamant that the floating bridge tunnel design is safer than any imaginable alternative for crossing this stretch of water. Once complete, the tunnel's array of resilient safety features should hopefully counterbalance any fears its pioneering nature might instill. The sheer ambition of Norway's first submerged floating highway hints at even greater possibilities to come. Since first being enviously envisioned by pioneering American engineer Jim Reed in 1890, floating bridges over water have remained a holy grail for radically advancing transport connectivity options in complex coastal terrains. Whilst bridges suspended high over sky have become routine, equivalent structures gently tucked away beneath the waves have proven an elusive prize. But Norway's upcoming project now looks set to unlock this tantalizing potential, paving the way for larger floating tunnels spanning ever wider waters. Future endeavors enhanced by Rogfast's trailblazing example could include a two-kilometer floating link across the vast Zognia Fjord near Bergen, and even multi-tunnel highway ambitions for the epic Arctic Northern Sea Route along Norway's remote northern coast. Meanwhile, more fantastical floating megatunnel visions exist for multi-bore links enabling unbroken shipping access straight through narrow isthmuses such as Panama, Nicaragua, and the Strait of Gibraltar. So while still firmly anchored in harsh reality, Norway's pioneering sub-level sea tunnel seems destined to kickstart a new generation of radical sub-aquatic transportation links previously confined to the conceptual drawing boards of visionary futurists. Who knows where this revolutionary floating infrastructure could carry ambitious civil engineers over coming years? How much longer before trans-oceanic floating tunnels even start appearing on imaginative plans?